Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me, and I am back. I am back. This is a brand new Deku What If. This is What If Deku was the reincarnation of Dark Side. This is part one of I have no idea how many, but here we are for a brand new Deku What If. As always, if you enjoy, show some love. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. Um, whatever you want to see next, whatever you want to see in the future. I know someone did comment and has been spamming the comment of uh basically what if deku had dark side's powers um actually i can find his i'm sure i can find his comment quickly um okay his name is kaisan uh 70 shout out kaisan 70 normally i don't do that um i don't normally i don't shout out people for uh for just leaving ideas because i always it, it's a lot of ideas and i have a long list of ideas normally that i do but shout out to him because I did uh, glance at it, and um, I was like, oh, you know what? That's a good idea. Let me let me rock up and do that. With that said, though, I don't want to waste much more of your time. Let me stop rambling or what y'all always tell me that I'm doing, yapping on. So let's just get into the what if. Let's get it. Azuka Midori was born like a child that was far different than any other child. He is far from your normal child, and what I mean by that is not that he's ugly, not that he's some crazy being, not that he's terrifying, not that he has skin as hard as rock. No, he is a lot different than you could possibly imagine because his intelligence is almost godlike. His intelligence is totally off the spectrum, and it seemed like it was a complete insane idea because when he was only two days old, he began to speak his first words. Azuku Midoriya was an absolute prodigy. Someone who is an absolute freak of nature in terms of just how intelligent he truly is. And it seems like that enhanced intelligence has been an interesting gift. Because at a young age of only four years old, he was already educated enough to do things on the level of high schoolers. This kid who is four years old, already smart enough to deal with things at a high school level, and he continues to progress at a insane and rapid rate. So much so that his mind and his intelligence expands on beyond just your normal intellect. It expands beyond just your normal school-based level and when he gets just a little bit older he's beyond all of that school-based stuff i mean we're talking high school college graduate level i mean he's at a totally different level it's as if he absorbs information at such a rapid rate that it makes everyone around him look like an absolute idiot and what I mean by it goes beyond just a school level is that Azuku Midoriya begins to think so far into this other world of, well, heroes. He's now thinking about so much more, thinking about everything that could possibly happen. But his mother, when testing him for a quirk, it seems as if they only can dignify that he's super intelligent. That's about it. They don't know anything else about him. And they don't know if he even has anything else to do with his quirk. Do they just think that he might just be the smartest being in the world? Now, that is no slouch. That is nothing that is bad by any means. But it's not like he's some extremely powerful being that can, you know, um, push things around, you know, pick up buildings and stuff like that. At least that's not what they think. But soon... They would realize that they are extremely wrong about that because Azuku is more powerful than they could possibly imagine. Azuku Midoriya might be extremely intelligent. And as he ages, he gets smarter and smarter. And around the age of about 12, he may be just, you know, flat out the smartest person on the planet and have this enhanced intellect that nobody could even touch. Thinking... 10 steps, maybe even 100 steps ahead of everyone, but soon they would realize what he's truly capable of when something would occur at school. It seems as if Azuku, he may be smart, but he still gets bullied for the most part by a lot of people, but he doesn't really think about the bullying very much, thinking that these people and their lives 
Well, they don't matter that much. And it might sound cruel, but that's what Izuku feels like, that these people don't necessarily matter that much at all. And the reason for this is they're not going to go on to be strong and powerful heroes. They're not going to go on to be the best to ever do it. They're not going to be on to make some crazy effect on the world and on the planet on in Japan or maybe not even in the city. So who cares? Who cares? Right? That's what Izuku feels like. I mean, who cares if if basically they're going to bully him a little bit because how smart he is. And he doesn't mind at all. And, well, let's just say things begin to change drastically when someone tries to actually hurt Azuku. Or, uh, well, hurt Azuku. Now, Azuku would just be sitting there, just a normal day in school. And immediately someone would come and try to hurt him, try to hit him. And when they would do this, it would be the worst mistake of their lives. Because when they would try to strike down Izuku with their quirk, and even Bakugo himself would try to explode a Deku with his quirk, he would get hit by it, stumbling backwards, st staggering to his feet, and they would look at him to see that he is slightly wounded. He has a cut on him and also an explosion mark, but then slowly but surely, but pretty damn quick actually, it would just disappear. It seems as if his body would begin to regenerate, and Izuku would look at his his hands and look at his body and see that it's completely fine, telling them to back off or else. And as he says this, they don't back off. They continue to try and hurt Izuku, but soon they would realize this was a horrible idea. Because when Izuku tries to move, when there was an inherent danger and there's this want to stop someone from hurting somebody, aka hurting himself... He begins to move faster than they could even recognize, showing off some sort of superhuman-like speed. And then out of nowhere, he begins to pick them up basically by their shirts, easily picking them both up, slamming them to the ground, immediately realizing that he might be so much more than just intelligence, that he might be so much more than just your run-of-the-mill, extremely smart person. Azuku Midoriya is entering a, a state of godlike proportions. Azuku has superhuman-like speed, superhuman-like strength, regeneration. I mean, these are things that he had no idea he would, he would have because his intelligence just overshadowed everything. He never tried to run extremely fast. He never tried to pick up someone twice his size he never tried to do any of these things so the fact that he's able to basically do all of it very quickly seems to be or seems to him that he actually has this within his powers it seems like there is something stored within him so much greater than he can possibly imagine even 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 with that said he feels like he has even more he feels something dormant within him something that is beyond even the comprehension of human beings, something that would only be suitable for the gods, that would only be suitable for this, this different type of godlike being, and he has it within him, he just doesn't know how to activate it just yet. Maybe it's an emotional thing, maybe it's something else, but he's not sure just yet, and this is the only thing that his intelligence would stump him on to a large degree, but he would soon learn what the, that is. But for now, I mean, let's just be honest, there is no complaints about being superhuman on every level. Because, well, let's just say he's going to be easily protecting himself from here on out, especially through the years. Now, time would pass and nobody would mess with Izuku. Frankly, he would become pretty damn popular. At the end of the day... Strength in this world is what matters. Strength is what obviously matters in this world. And at the end of, and at the end of the day, people really cling on to the idea of you having a strong quirk or something like that. Now, this is the level that Izuku is at. He is now terror or scaring everybody from really messing with him in general. They don't want to mess with him. They think that he's not only a freak, but obviously extremely powerful. So you get a bit of a split. You get the people that want to be his friends because, well, he's extremely powerful and they could probably use him maybe or 
or use him to set set them up or anything they can think of. And then you get the other other part of people who are absolutely terrified of him and they don't want anything to do with him because they feel as if he's going to, well, kill them. Now, there are maybe a few stray people there that just absolutely despise Izuku, like Katsuki Bakugo, because, well, Izuku has shown that he is so much better and just so much greater than Bakugo that he doesn't want to swallow that pill. He hates the idea that Bakugo is better than him, and he wants to make sure, or Bakugo wants or excuse me, that, that Izuku is better than Bakugo, and that Bakugo just wants to make sure that he can somehow surpass Izuku, but we all know it's never going to be that simple, because, well, Bakugo may have been blessed by a quirk that is pretty powerful, but Izuku has been blessed by the gods, blessed by, by the gods to give him powers that nobody, nobody could possibly even imagine and soon they age or he would continue to basically age and continue to progress through middle school and finally and finally it would be time for him to more or less prepare for the the entrance the entrance exam of well ua high school now one day in middle school or in his classroom the teacher would talk about the entrance exam of ua speaking on the fact that both Azuku and Bakugo are trying to get in. And everybody's in agreement that they both should be able to get in, but honestly, Azuku's probably going to be the one that truly leads the way because Azuku is pretty damn, like, you know, high up there in terms of power and strength and all of the above. So they truly believe that, you know, that's going to happen that way. That Azuku is going to be the number one person and is going to be the number one person in terms of progression and in terms of being that level. So he would he would be kind of celebrated by the class and Bakugo would continue to get more and more jealous and more and more frustrated because at the end of the day, that's what Bakugo has been doing. Bakugo does not like Azuku. He wants the attention, even if he doesn't want to admit that. But still, he is basically um angry that azuku is getting all this attention now with all that said they would continue talking about different heroes and different things like that and azuku's day would eventually be over but his or his day basically in school would be over but that's not the only thing that is going to be over or basically enter a new stage of everything because guess what this is the first time something truly crazy is going to happen to Azuku. Because after this day, after he's done with school, he would actually walk home the normal way he does. And that normal way is always the long way. Azuku believes that his time away from home and just his time only with himself allows him to think deeper thoughts, allows him to think a totally different spectrum of ideas. So he sits there walking beneath a bridge, the same bridge he always walks beneath eyes closed but it seems like mind is completely open he walks through thinking about everything thinking about the universe thinking about the world thinking about being a hero if any of this truly matters and what is he truly striving for is he striving for more intelligence is he striving for being a hero is he striving for fame or fortune he has no clue and this is the only thing he has no clue on. He feels like he's hunting for something, as if there's something out there bigger for him and the people he cares about, but he doesn't know quite what it is. Well, that's until the thought of that would stop. He would hear things beneath him, he would sense things around him, and he, would, he could feel something coming closer. As soon as he thinks about this, a giant burst would come out of the sewers, the manhole cover would slam against the roof of the of the of the basically ceiling of the bridge or the underneath of the bridge and immediately this person sludge this creature would tell him that he needs his body that he's coming for him so he needs his body now in which azuku would look at him and tell him to turn around stop go and and face this person that is chasing him because that person will be more forgiving 
than the person that stands in front of him now. Azuku would see this being not listen, thinking that this kid is just throwing around empty threats and Azuku could feel the power that he once felt before channel through his entire body. He can feel something that is burning within him, but also burning around him all at the same time. His eyes begin to glow this, this beautiful red color, and it seems as if this, this beam of, so, of some sorts, something telling him to say that this right here is known as the Omega Beams and the aura, the feeling, the cosmic energy that he's feeling around him and through him and channeling within him is known as the Omega Effect. He begins to fire these beams from his eyes, which immediately lock on to the sludge villain but there's no way, no way he would be able to dodge them anyways. And as he shoots at the sludge villain, they smash into the sludge villain. And as they do, it disintegrates. Not only 95% of the sludge villain, but it also puts the sludge villain completely out of commission where there's only a tiny piece of him left. Azuku stops realizing that he doesn't want to kill anybody, but that's what this power is. The power and the curse of being so powerful in itself could lead to him killing as well. But here's the thing. What's stopping him from ending the life of a villain that is going to hurt so many more? Why imprison them? Why keep them in a prison and stop instead of just stopping them permanently? Azuku is thinking about it logically in a way, but also has to try and think about it through the lens of a hero, through the lens of morality, in which he begins to shake his head thinking that this thing sucks, that this sucks. Thinking about things through the lens of morality is the worst possible thing you could do, and it flat out sucks. Because to him, he believes that a villain, if a villain dies, then people will be saved. But of course, it's never that simple, is it? You have to treat these villains like they truly matter and treat the villains like they, well, are good. That they could be better. Azuku shakes his head and calms himself down as just that tiny piece of the sludge villain crawls around and slowly approaches him. He would swipe the sludge, that tiny piece of the sludge villain away and a mouth would come up on it and begin to speak to Azuku, asking how the hell he did that. Where's the rest of his body? I mean, what's going to happen? Is he going to regenerate back? In which Azuku would wave his hand and say that he would assume that he has regenerative powers as well and to shut up because he's thinking. As he says this, All Might would come bursting out of the manhole cover as well and All Might would say, I am here and Azuku would be confused. You're late. Like, really late. Azuku would tell him to put that thing in a, in the, in a bottle and, well, they'll deal with, they'll, they can, he can send it off to whatever prison that he needs to go to. In which All Might would ask, did he do this? In which Azuku says that, no, the sludge villain trip fell and splattered everywhere on, on his own. He would walk away and immediately just leave, and as he turns the corner, All Might would chase after him, but when All Might would turn the corner as well, Azuku would be gone. It's as if Azuku doesn't want to speak with who a lot of people know as their hero in terms of All Might, but Azuku doesn't want to speak to All Might. He doesn't want to even think about certain things at the moment, so he doesn't want to interact with someone like All Might. He learned a long time ago that, yes, he may be the symbol of peace for many, and that is a good thing for this world, but it doesn't mean he has to look up to him, and frankly, he doesn't, because his intelligence is far beyond to looking up to heroes at this moment, and Azuku Midoriya, well, let's just say his in intellect is just beyond what he would obviously want, or beyond of, um, beyond anything that anyone else would would even be able to comprehend so he doesn't really care about the idea of looking up to somebody to having a role model no that he doesn't need it he is his own role model and if he seeks out to be a better person he can force himself to be that through his intellect and through his breakdown and through his deduction of becoming that better person and it's that simple at least it's that simple for him 
He would head home and he would even speak to his mother about this relatively quickly. No, just kind of nodding at the idea of basically fighting a villain and destroying him and whatever, right? He, he would briefly say that and his mother would be worried, but it seems as if he's fine not only fine actually thriving it seems like he he enjoyed the experience he was able to learn a couple things that he didn't have the chance to think about without actually fighting a villain in itself and zuku would be kind of actually happy which is definitely an awkward thing because when's the last time they've seen zuku well flat out this happy but that's kind of beyond the point. And Azuku would basically just tell his mother, don't worry about it, everything's fine. And that he's going to start his 10-month um, regimen of training, studying, and, and uh, being ready for, for UA. Even though he knows that studying is practically useless and he's going to ace literally everything and his intellect will go beyond all of it. Now, he could have sat here and made support items and done this and done that and probably became extremely rich. But this version of Azuku, well, let's just say he doesn't really care about all that. His mind is so far beyond everything that the material object, well, it doesn't really matter to him. That's until about well, nine-ish months into his entire 10-month regimen, his mother would be stressing over bills, over so much stuff, and Izuku would decide that he would help his mother, telling his mother that he, need, that he needs $100. And she would give him the $100, but she would say that she really doesn't have that much right now. But Izuku would use this $100 to actually interact with any type of fluctuating market and would begin to absolutely just interact with everything that he understands to its maximum degree and in a matter of one month he would make it so that his mother would not be able or would not have to excuse me work at all making a ton of money and out of nowhere through stock market through anything you can think to think of and as as weird as it is like you know stocks crypto anything he makes a ton of money off of it all and it's easy for him very simple because he can predict literally all of the fluctuations based on what it's what's happened what has been seen what the news is and what everything is going on he's able to predict companies downfall um or downfalls companies um uphill battles companies um absolute explosions in terms of how good they, they, they they're potentially going to be and how good they are now and so on and so forth he's able to predict it all and it makes it extremely easy to make a ton of money and this makes it so his mother doesn't have to worry about money ever again and also doesn't have to worry about well at the end of the day doesn't have to worry about him because she obviously was providing for him and doing all these things. So now she doesn't have to worry about it. And she's extremely grateful for that. But soon, the day of the UA entrance exam would finally be upon them. And let's just say this is where Azuku becomes a household name. Because when they would go to the entrance exam. Obviously, we're starting with the written portion of the exam. And let's just say... He makes the exam look like an absolute joke, getting a perfect score on the entirety of the exam. And everybody, well, let's just say is in complete and utter shock, especially the graders, because the graders look at it and see that it is perfect, flawless. It's as if this kid is just on another level of intellect. Yeah, another level. They don't really know much about him. He's never really gone out of his way to... Well, basically like show off or show people what he's capable of and stuff like that. He's he doesn't care. He's never cared. And that level of intellect is is the reason for it. He doesn't really mind. Now, with that said, he does obviously um, pass that written portion of the exam. And there is no well worries about the practical. But of course, he sits through the entire lecture, listening to President Mike talk about what's going to happen. You got the one-pointers, you got the two-pointers, you got the three-point robots, and the zero-point robots. But he says very clearly that the zero-point robots should not be touched. Stay away from them. That it's not a good, uh, actual, uh, actually a good idea for you to even mess with the zero-point robots. And at the end of the day, it's just danger for no reason. And there's no, there's no point of really messing with the zero-point robots. And it's just not worth at all or worth it for them to even um, kind of even 
utilize them by any means. Now, with that said, um, Azuku heads in to take on these so-called robots to get as many points as possible. And this is where he begins to think to himself that he wants to try out his new abilities, you could say, or ability being known as the Omega Beams. And this would be the perfect chance. Because Azuku sits there waiting for it to begin and immediately utilizing the Omega Beams to shoot and disintegrate every single one. Yes, every single robot in existence in that in that place gets obliterated. Obliterated by Azuku Midoriya. And everybody stands there in complete shock. And the voices or the voice comms would come up and... They would say, well, this isn't something they thought would happen, so they're going to have to figure out a solution for the other students, but congratulations to Azuka Midoriya on his, well, let's just say, um, very, 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 very insane accomplishment. Azuku would come out, and frankly, Nezu and Aizawa would be waiting, Asking him about how he was able to do that. Like, that was absolutely catastrophic and absolutely insane. And Aizawa says that, well, they've never heard about him, but he must be some sort of a prodigy. And, frankly, Azuku says that he is not necessarily a prodigy. He has worked for everything he's gotten, but at the same time, he knows he's blessed by, well, what seems to be the gods. In which Azuku says this with a straight face, and Aizawa gets a feeling that this kid is dead serious. I mean, there is no flinching, there is no um, version of it where he's like, oh yeah, you know, like, I'm kidding around. No, this is literally him saying this for real, and he truly, truly believes that he is gifted by the gods. And how could you blame him? Because it obviously seems like he is. He obviously seems like he is definitely gifted by the gods, especially based on what he has done and basically what he's capable of, which is in insane capabilities that he's capable of, insane abilities that he's able to, to basically do um, throughout this time, and which Azuku continues to show off more and more um of what he's going to be capable of, but just not right now. He's going to show it off once he gets into Yue, and Aizawa and Nezu make it very clear that there is no way around this. He's definitely going to get in. I mean, is there no, or obviously there was no questioning there, He they assume, based on the way he uh, presents himself. Azuku says that, yes, that the plan was to always go to Yue, and he just wants to try his hand out in hero work and see what it's really like. He tells them that he'll, they'll never have to worry about his classes, that he's already beyond that level of learning, and he'll only have to worry about learning things, well, around the hero work, you could say. And that's what matters to him. In which they hear this, and they're not 100% sure if he's serious, but it f seems like he definitely is. It's kind of a wild thing to hear a student say, but this student is on a totally different level. He is your he's not your run of the mill student and he's well very far from it. And at the end of the day, Azuku Midoriya makes it very clear the level he's at and makes it very clear that most likely there's not going to be a single student even close in which Aizawa can deduce that, you know, without a second thought and even thinks to himself that there might not be a student even close or even close to him, that that basically um, would even be able to stand up to him. And we're talking students even at at a level of well higher than them, which would be absolute or which is absolutely insane when you put it into perspective. But we're talking class one A students will not be able to stand up to him, and well maybe even class third year students may not even be able to stand up to him which is a scary thought for Aizawa because what does he teach a kid that has the potential to be the number one hero faster than you could imagine? And what do you teach a kid who is smarter and more intelligent than every person in the world? Yeah, that is something that is very, very sketchy to, to basically deal with and very sketchy or basically extremely sketchy to 
um, deal with throughout this time that he's going to be trying his best to teach a student that practically knows everything that that anybody could possibly know before you even e would even know it. Now, with that said, there's a lot of things Azuku wants to get into and a lot of things that he wants to do very, very soon once, to, once he gets into UA. And he's super, super excited, even if he doesn't show it very well. Now, he would await the letter as a formality at his home, awaiting for the letter to come from UA. And, of course, it would say, you know, he got in and that he's in Class 1A and that he's the number one student in his class. It's not a surprise. It was an expectation. It was not a, uh, well, what's what we call it? it is not a theory. It was a spoiler. Because at the end of the day, he knew exactly what he was capable of. And he knew exactly what type of person um, he, he was and is right at this moment. He knows the level he's at. And he knows um, that he can basically be better than maybe even most pro heroes at this moment. So when his first day of UA High School would come, when he would walk up to those doors it would seem fitting that he would be approaching a giant door as if he's walking into a brand new world that he, in terms of intellect, has not truly explored just yet. He's seen things, he's watched others be, do hero work, but he's not experienced it. And once he experiences it, his intellect will then take over and he'll learn how to be a hero greater than anyone has ever seen. But... Him learning how to be said great hero, well, does that mean the other heroes aren't so great? Does that mean that the other heroes are doing things incorrectly? Well, I'm not so sure, and maybe Izuku knows way more than we do, because it seems like Izuku believes that they might, or they might not be fulfilling their true potential, and maybe hero work is a little bit... Um, lower on the scale than they could possibly imagine. But there's only one way to find out, and that's in the future of this What If. And this will be the end of part one of What If Deku was the reincarnation of Darkseid. And if you enjoy, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. I hope you all enjoy the video. Sorry I missed the day the, uh, yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, sporadically I'll probably give myself a day off because, you know, I get really, really creatively drained sometimes and I'm like, I, I want to do this part, but I have no idea what I'm doing because I am completely out of it. <laughs> but, um, as always though, I'm, I appreciate all the love and support that I get from you guys. Um, I'm glad to be back doing these type of what ifs. They are very fun and I enjoy them. Um, of course, you probably will get a little bit of a mix of uh, of that very hev heavy storytelling, but also a mix of me like, you know, um, mildly talking about certain things that I believe would happen. You know, a, a good mix of both from the old days and the new times. And uh, yeah, I'll stop rambling on. I know y'all probably have a lot of stuff to do. Like I said, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Appreciate all the support. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.